Hello and welcome to Raisina 2019, a whole host of dialogues that are taking place, conversations that you absolutely must not miss. And here's another one of those. We're looking at centralized capital distributed ledgers. Now, hold on, hold on. We're going to get to what all of that means. But among other things, also looking at will the internet work for us or for the 1%? Now, that is a conversation that we've been having rather passionately in India and joining us to get into all of that and the technologies that are going to hopefully ensure that there's more inclusivity when we talk about the internet is Captain Mulligan. She's visiting research fellow in Imperial College Center for Cryptocurrency. Thanks so much Captain, for taking our time uh, to be with us. Uh, like I said, I'm going to talk a bit about blockchain and other technologies that, 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 that you've really sort of done a, a deep dive into. But just coming to the second half of this, this question, can we make the internet work for all? Can it really be a world wide web as it was meant to be? I mean, the stats are are, are, are not what we would like them to be. Only 40% of the world has internet access and, and are the 49 poorest countries, only 5% of those populations are on the internet. So uh, this is 2019 that we are having this conversation. In. How much time do you think it will take to change these numbers, to make them fairer? Yeah, no, it's an extremely good question. So my personal opinion is that we do need the World Wide Web to be for everybody and include everybody. Currently, we do see it, as you say, as you know, mainly serving the 1% uh, and mainly serving certain countries, really, to, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I think that in order to really deliver on the promise of digital technologies, we need to get them out to everybody. That gives us a number of technical challenges. So how do we uh, roll out the infrastructure effectively and properly for you know, that number of people? And how do we do it in an environmentally sustainable fashion as well? Um, and how do we innovate on the business models that are driving these technologies forward? Because um, it, you know, it is uh, it's a problem not just in uh, India, for example, in the United Kingdom, we have uh, you know uh, concepts of digital poverty now, where people are unable to afford to pay for access to the internet to get uh, government services. Um, it's an incredibly important question, and unfortunately, I, I've come to the conclusion that it costs money. We just have to actually accept that it will cost money and pay to get it out there. Right, and I suppose that everyone then has to be willing to go deep into their pockets to find this, and whether it's governments or corporations and societies. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you just look at the technologies that are perhaps going to, to sort of change this, I want to talk about blockchain. Uh, there's been a lot of exuberance really about blockchain in a sense, but at the same time, there are certain issues, there are concerns. From an India perspective, I can tell you that one of them centers around trust or mistrust, really. So how do we, how do we deal with that? Yeah, no, it's an extremely important question. I mean, the irony for me around blockchain is we can easily get trust between nodes on the network, but it's very difficult to get human trust. And that's, I think, what we're talking about. How do we get humans to trust a new technology? And more important question, I think, is blockchain always the right solution? So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly uh, that there's been an incredible amount of hype. I think a lot of that has been driven by greed. So right. you know, many people around the world thought they could make a lot of money off these uh, crypto assets. The crypto currency, right. Exactly. Right. But then there's the other part of blockchain. So the part of blockchain that has nothing to do with currency at all, or you know, um, new creation of value, and that is the application of blockchain within uh, industries and within uh, the broader society. So, for example, blockchain can be used to reduce the costs of implementation of many different types of services mm -hmm. in companies. The issue there, however, is that it is uh, an incredible redefinition of how business processes really function and how trust is enacted and enabled between companies and individuals. So it's actually, to some extent, the first truly digital economy uh, solution. It, you, you have to understand the digital technologies, yes, mm -hmm. but you also have to understand the political and economic uh, context within which you are building that technology. Right. And for me, it's, it's such an interesting thing to study precisely because of that reason. I see. Um, yeah, so I completely agree that the trust, uh, you know, and it is quite valid that the trust within towards blockchain, in particular those who have been looking at cryptocurrencies, right. has dramatically dropped. Right. Um, but to a certain extent, I think that is actually a benefit because if we can take that hype out of that, you know, I see. Uh, then we can get on with the business, business sort of just actually delivering on. something yeah. of use and seeing where it really actually works and where it's just hype. Okay. So you, you, you talked about cryptocurrency, and that's been one reason for you know, where there's been there's been trust issues really, and, and there's been a crackdown in a sense around this, at least here in India, on cryptocurrencies. But uh, 
I was reading a report which said that blockchain technology can be used for things like job creation. Now that is a challenge for India, which is going to be the world's youngest country uh, in, in, in a year or so from now. So uh, how can blockchain technology be leveraged for that? Yeah, so I think blockchain is an interesting technology and in that really uh, it's about how you apply it. So I think there would be a lot of jobs created around how you are going to understand how to implement it into certain industries. Mm -hmm. So the other area that many people are talking about is the use of blockchain in order to create new types of company. So right. what, does, what does that actually mean? Uh, well, we would take many individual workers yeah. who aren't working in a company or, sel or are self-employed and they would be able to work together using the blockchain in supply chain management to deliver to larger customers. Uh, and the money would, you know, it would increase the amount of money that each of those individuals would I receive. Um, that, however, is enormously complex and it raises a number of regulatory issues exactly. you know, around tax, uh, around you know, corporation mm. insurance, all of these kind of things would need to be rethought. Mm. But it's a really fantastic idea. Um, but like many fantastic ideas, exactly. delivery <laughs> is going to it be difficult. It always comes difficult. down to that, right? Indeed, How yeah. you <laughs> deliver on that fantastic <laughs> idea? There's no doubt of those ideas. But you touched upon something that I was interested in talking about, which was regulation. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, technology as it, as, as it is with, with is, is just so rapidly evolving. It's changing far faster than we can really keep up. So in this environment, what role do regulators play when dealing with technologies like blockchain? Yeah, no, no it's a really good question and one that I think we've seen many regulators have been struggling with. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in 2016, many of them were saying, yes, we'll open our markets to cryptocurrencies and yeah. then 2018, everyone's Absolutely. blocking these markets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think the role of government doesn't really change that much, to be mm -hmm. honest. It's about protection of consumer. Mm -hmm. It's about ensuring that uh, the, there is no antitrust. So one of the issues around uh, a blockchain between large companies, for example, let's say insurance, mm. if many of them decided to implement a blockchain um, within the industry, is that there could be price collusion um, done using that technology. So those are the sort of things that uh, the regulators should be looking at. So basically, how do I protect a consumer? I see. And then finally, if it, we look at the cryptocurrency side, in most um, uh, countries, the bank uh, mm. provides a, a guarantee of your savings deposit. Mm. There is no guarantee of that in cryptocurrencies. Exactly. Um, and I think it's really about digital literacy as well Absolutely. to try and explain um, what these technologies really mean and right. to do it in a way that's accessible. And in a sense, just having that bank there's perhaps assuring, reassuring, you know, to all those people who are used to dealing with finances in the traditional fashion. But, uh, I, I, but before I wrap, I do want to sort of bring this statistic out, which, which struck me as something that I, I really must say in this uh, Facebook session, which is uh, blockchain is the fastest growing skill set that is now demanded by job sites. According to a report in the Mint, job growth rates uh, for uh, blockchain are around 2,000 to 6,000 percent. I mean, that's just, that's just phenomenal. So when we're looking at growth like this, to all those watching who want to know, what are the lessons that India can learn? And are there any, any lessons that India can learn as we wrap this, you know, from, from experiences around the world as we sort of enter somewhat uncharted territory? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm always uh, a bit shocked when I see such statistics because effectively what you say, uh, you know, in order to build a uh, blockchain or to work with a blockchain, you need a, an OK programming or computer science background. Right. So the lessons to be learned there are the same as, as always, STEM <laughs> and, and math and, and those yeah. kind of things. Um, but also I think with blockchain, um, you know, there is an opportunity to leapfrog the creation of many of the different types of economic structures that we've had to basically put up with right. in Europe or the UK or and you, you could sort of hop around those if it's done in a thoughtful and um, effective manner. Great, but that takes lots of discussion across lots of people. And the final thing about blockchain uh, regulation is that you must convene the right people. Absolutely. It's actually not the traditional people that you've, you've convened previously. I mean, and and th that's quite true, I think, of technology in just so many areas. You know, yeah. that you need to get people who get it, you get people to understand. But at least here in India, we're talking about it. We're, we're trying to sort of come to terms with these new technologies and trying to understand it. Thanks very much, Captain, for your time. Thank thanks. You. Thank thanks you. so much. Pleasure talking to you. And uh, keep, of course, all your thoughts and feedback coming in.